We have lots of new video and photos to show you on the update on the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse up in Baltimore in the Unified Command salvage efforts so far to date. And I also want to show you what the NTSB is up to lately because we haven't really heard from them. And then here we have this video that was released just this afternoon from the Unified Command, this animation. So check this out. The Key Bridge Response Salvage Operations Plan is complex and highly technical with many challenges above and below the surface of the water, but it can be understood in three concurrent priorities. First, we must clear wreckage like steel and concrete from the 700-foot navigation channel and as part of that effort, clear a 280-foot limited access channel within its span. At a depth of 35 feet, this will allow three major car carriers one-way traffic in and out of the harbor. While this is taking place, we must work to refloat the container ship Dolly and move it away from the Federal Navigation Channel. Once the Dolly is out of the channel, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and its partners in the Unified Command will continue to clear the remaining wreckage, ensuring the 50-foot deep Federal Navigation Channel opens back up to two-way vessel traffic. We are committed to undertaking this work with care and precision as we restore full service to a port that is so vital to our nation. So my only question looking at the a screenshot of their animation here is, you know, how accurate was this? Did they just make it sort of approximate or does this like very closely resemble what it actually looks like there right now? We know the dolly is listing like this a little bit to the left. Some of the drawing doesn't quite make sense because if this ship needs a 49 foot draft, in theory, this thing should be coming all the way down to the bottom around this level here, unless it's buried in the mud. So again, that's still the unknown of what's going on underneath there. But this looks like a, a reasonable approximation to give us a visual of what's going to happen. And so I want to show you from a photograph. Here is a bird's eye view of what's going on right now with the wreck. So the dolly is right here. The four pillars were right here and the other four pillars were right here. And the channel was in the middle between the two. So let me show you and where they want to put it. So the, the federal channel is already right here where the yellow is. And, and it continues on to probably around this part of it right over here. So then the limited access channel is right over here, 280 feet wide and 35 deep. So that's where they're talking about doing it. Now, the only problem that I have with all of this is, you know, right here when they want to do the limited access channel, this spot right here is where I said that the construction vehicles were all lined up before the bridge collapsed. My hypothesis is that they are right in this area right in here, which would be right underneath where they want to do that alternate channel. Let me overlay it back here again. See that? It's going to be right here. I'm hoping they're able to recover those vehicles out of there and the missing guys. I have a problem with the fact that they're going to send this temporary traffic going right over that limited access lane there, which is directly over where the construction vehicles are and where there's potentially three more people down there. And so I think the families of these people might get pretty upset unless they can bring them home before they free up this part of the channel to allow traffic to go through there once more. And I also want to bring you up to date on what the NTSB is doing right now in this investigation where NTSB Chair Jennifer Homendy was being nominated and she answered some questions relating to the investigation. Uh, I'll start with the update on Baltimore. We've come, uh, conducted a number of interviews. We've interviewed the pilots, and I'm gonna make sure, if you don't mind, I'd like to consult my notes to make sure that I stick with the facts. Uh, we've co uh, conducted interviews with the pilots, the second officer who was the man on watch at the time, the master on the bridge, the chief engineer, the third assistant engineer, the helmsman, the bosun, the chief officer who was off watch, second officer, second officer who conducted pre-departure uh, checks, second assistant engineer, electrician, oiler, and three U.S. Coast Guard watch standers at the command center, uh, and received tugboat operator statements, and we're continuing to conduct interviews. Uh, most people don't realize we're actually still on scene. Our investigative team is on the vessel as we speak. Uh, we downloaded the VDR, the voyage data recorder on scene, and then we removed the VDR uh, in order to download uh, the past 30 days in our lab to learn from that. Uh, we formalized uh, parties to the investigation. I'm pleased to say that Grace, Grace Ocean 
and Synergy have become parties to our investigation, as well as the US Coast Guard, Maryland Transportation Authority, and the Association of Maryland Pilots. The video of the dolly, right before it collided with the Francis Scott Key Bridge, shows that the vessel's lights were turning on and off, suggesting a potential issue either with the engine or the electrical system. I understand you're just beginning your investigation into the incident. However, is there anything you can tell us about what may have caused the vessel's lights to turn on and off? And do you anticipate that whatever affected the lights may have contributed to the loss of, of vessel control? I do believe they're related, uh, as does our investigators. Our investigators are on scene. Uh, they needed the assistance of Hyundai, who is the manufacturer of equipment in the engine room, to download data from the electrical power system and look at the circuit breakers. That is where our focus is right now in this investigation. Of course, that's preliminary. Uh, it could take different uh, roads, different paths as we continue this investigation. It's very early, uh, but we're collecting that data. Wow, did you hear that statement? So this really piqued my interest, or do you think I'm, maybe I'm just reading too much into this? It seems like they're shifting a lot of their attention now to these electrical systems and the circuit breakers on the ship. So does that mean that there was something inherently wrong with them that they don't understand, or is it just part of the investigation? Because, you know, they like to go into detail on everything they look at. Hyundai is sending people here to the U.S. from overseas in order to help investigate this. So that makes me wonder, is this becoming a larger component of the investigation? We have had the manufacturer uh, of, t of uh, equipment in the engine room uh, to look closely at the electrical power system. Uh, we're continuing to look at that. Uh, we've asked for additional assistance from the manufacturer who returned from overseas this week with experts to look at the circuit breakers. A lot of people don't understand circuit breakers and electrical panels and all that stuff and what can go wrong. So I want to show you one that I have here in my garage that we pulled out of somebody's house and I'll show you what can go wrong. So people always wonder what can go wrong with circuit panels. So here's one that I wanted to show you. This is one that we pulled out of a lady's house that I know who uh, last year, this had to be replaced because it actually, you can see here, it caught fire here. And it just looks like a normal circuit breaker. What could go wrong with it? Well, the problem that I see with this and, and what we noticed with this particular circuit breaker box is they had too many of these double down ones here. You see here where they're all split. And the problem is, is when you keep splitting them and trying to bring in more circuits in there, they'll start to draw more current. And over time, you can cause problems with the bus bar. It starts to overheat, and it starts a process called pitting, which you can see right here. So you see how this, it looks like it's just eaten away there, and it gets scorched. And when the bus bars get scorched, and the circuit breakers have been removed now, but when they're scorched, the circuit breakers can't make good contact. So that increases the resistance. So now you start drawing more current. This is how you get into these out of control circuit tripping problems. Another thing a lot of people don't know too is that when you see these ratings like 20 amps and 30 amps on these circuit breakers, that doesn't mean they're gonna trip at 30. They will often trip at about 75% of the rated capacity. So a 20 amp breaker often trips at like 17. I've seen it here myself when I was doing my Christmas lights and I measured the current at that time. So that does happen also. Now that could bring up in question here on the Dali ship on some of those shipping containers which are, need to be refrigerated is how many of them were there and did they overload the system? Were they causing any breaks? Were those refrigerated shipping containers causing any of the breakers on their electrical panels to trip. So that's something the NTSB is going to be looking at. And I got news for you folks, you don't even have to have a fire to have problems in your bus bar or in your breakers here because all it takes is a little bit of scorching on the bus bar for the breakers here to not be able to make a good contact. Uh, in addition to that, our Office of Highway Safety Team is really focused on peer protection, looking at the original bridge design and how it would be built today, under today's standards. I expect, uh, regardless of some uh, erroneous press report from Bloomberg, 
that our preliminary report will not be out until the first week of May. We are still on scene collecting information. Now she will briefly talk about the Dolly's Voyage Data Recorder. A voyage data recorder provides very basic information, not like a flight data recorder. Uh, so there isn't enough information on that to understand. It's really a, a, what was going on in the engine room. It's really a snapshot of the major systems on a vessel. Uh, so that information in the engine room will help us tremendously. Also, have all the parties so far been cooperating with the NTSB's investigation? Yes, sir. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, if that changes, would you please let this committee know? Yes. Sir. Now, you remember on some of my earlier videos here on this series on the Baltimore Bridge collapse, I mentioned how a lot of the port owners need to really take a look at their bridges and evaluate their whole system there and see if those bridges are well enough protected. But this was brought up yesterday at the hearing also. Or any open recommendations? We have investigated for uh, many years, uh, back to 1967, many bridge strikes by vessels. And we've issued recommendations, including one I will point out, uh, that to, for uh, the U.S. Car Coast Guard to evaluate U.S. waterways, the type of vessel vessels and shipping on the waterway, any volume of traffic on a bridge, any strikes to bridges, and peer protection. Uh, that should be in place. Uh, at the time, this was in the early 1980s, at the time the U.S. Coast Guard responded and said they did not have the authority to do that. They submitted a study from the late 70s uh, providing for types of peer protection, but there's still action that needs to occur uh, to look, uh, frankly, at how, our, how shipping has changed over the years, how transportation has changed in our waterways, the types of vessels uh, that we are seeing, the types of container ships that we are seeing, the volume of traffic, and looking at bridge designs. If, if I were a state that would, and the Department of Transportation, that's what I would be looking at now. Are these bridges uh, protected for the types of traffic that is going uh, going through now. Okay, thank you. Well, just a reminder, if you're new here and you haven't seen my other videos, make sure you see this video here on the FIU bridge collapse that I just completed. It's one of my best engineering analysis videos yet. And then also last week, check out this video here. We had that scary and fatal crane collapse here in Fort Lauderdale, my own stomping grounds. So thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you on the next one.